Hello my dear friends, you are on the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 17th of May of 2023. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And as usually the most important, the most interesting updates are coming from Bakhmut. In the previous video that I made this morning of the local time, of Ukrainian time, we discussed that as a result of fierce fightings, according to some sources, the Russians managed to establish final 100% control over the residential area that located on the northwest of Bakhmut on the north of the citadel of the domino so this is the first update that we received today and furthermore some sources were saying that as a result of fierce fightings of a storming operation that the Wagner's launched the previous night of the local time uh, the Russians managed the Wagner's managed to capture the first line of defense in the domino fortification so probably the entire area was captured by the way probably by the entire area was captured by this evening but for now we still haven't received any confirmation and of course the most reliable confirmation that we can receive is the confirmation from the head of Wagner Evgeny Prigozhin uh, usually he published his update somewhere at 10 p.m. of the local time so there are still two or three hours before that date and probably today he is going to announce that Bakhmut has fallen. Uh, uh, the thing is that today the, uh, oh, Western, the Russian sources published the video of artillery attack in the western part of Bakhmut and based on that video that we're going to watch in a minute uh, the Wagners were attacking this uh, block this edge of domino so this is the corner this is the last buildings so we can say that this is some kind of witnesses uh, that the Russians captured this area completely and let's take a look at this video so as you can see this is the corner of the domino and uh, we can we can recognize this area based on the garages that located on the on the edge of this town so this line this is the garages so as you can see the Wagner's completely attacking this area com were completely focused during the day so probably they were trying to force the Ukrainians to run their to run away from their positions I expect that one more time somewhere at 10 uh, p.m. of the local time we are going to receive the final confirmation from Prigozhin about let's say 99 or 90 like 99.99 percent .99 of control probably we're going to see very interesting updates as you can see uh, the uh, the situation of the Ukrainian forces on the western part of Domino is is getting worse and worse every single minute not even every single hour the Russian sources are saying that a lot of forces a lot of battalions and brigades are stuck parts not the entire brigades uh, has been like encircled in this area and uh, was uh, not captured but blockaded by the Russians and uh, the Russians are saying that currently when talking about the final la line of the domino um, domino fortification there are a little bit more or something around 1000 soldiers left most of the Ukrainian army have already left Bakhmut at least the domino fortification and this uh, residential area on the north west of domino currently they are trying to establish their positions on the forest lines uh, between Ivanovska and domino they're waiting for continuous pressure from the Ukrainian side of the on the south one more time I'll remind you that the Russians destroyed the bridges that were heading from Chasov Yar to Canal and uh, along 0506 road to Chromova and the another bridge was destroyed in Ivanovska all these things were done from the Russian side to reduce the Ukrainian logistic and not to allow the Ukrainians to use easy simple ways for us uh, retreating from this bridgehead currently it's very difficult to understand what exactly is happening in the in the domino fortification in the western part of Bakhmut but from the other side we understand that Wagner's are pushing and we expect these final updates about the uh, about the collapse of Bakhmut but from the other side we know and the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation confirms that the Ukrainians launched and continued their counter-offensive operation exactly in the south part of Bakhmut in the vicinity of Ivanovska of this town and mainly the Ukrainians are attacking the Russians in direction of uh, of uh, Klishevka and the Ukrainians are trying to return control over the uh, how to call it this fortification area that located on the north of Klishevka but the thing is and the main problem is that uh, uh, there is a 
there is a, a four separate uh, separate motorized rifle brigade on their way in this area who is trying currently to hold the ukrainians and when talking about the ukrainians mainly they're attacking using the 80s air assault brigade fifth assault brigade 24 separate assault brigade idar and of course 57's separate rifle battalion of 80s air assault brigade furthermore today the ukrainian sources published very interesting information that belarusian nationalist forces also were involved in those in these offensive operations and some sources are saying that they were damaged and they had a lot of losses and were forced to step back when talking about the four separate um, motorized rifle brigade the russians are saying that during the previous 24 hours this brigade on the south in the vicinity of ivanovska and probably the 200s motorized brigade in the vicinity of birkovka managed to repulse up to seven attacks from the ukrainian side and the entire losses the total losses of the ukrainians during the day were around 360 soldiers 11 armored vehicles and two artillery system and of course one radio ANTPQ-50. The Ukrainians continue pushing as I understand and based on the piece of information we received from the open source, the Ukrainians stopped any offensive operation on the north. Probably they understand that it is very difficult to penetrate the Russians and to capture their positions between the Birkovska water reservoir and the railroad ways. So probably they managed to develop a little bit their bridgehead in the vicinity of Hromova, but after the Hromova, after the northern residential area fell, currently there is no reason even to hold this bridgehead because there is no value. If only if the Ukrainians have any plans to continue their offensive operation further, probably only in this case this bridgehead have, has some value for the Ukrainians. But the, with the, the fierce fightings and the fierce pressure we can see on the south. We'll see uh, whether the Ukrainians are able to do something or not, but the Western sources and the Ukrainian sources are saying that the Ukrainians did have significant success there on the flanks. And uh, from the other side, we see that the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation basically confirmed this information, at least in the part of fierce fightings and so on. So we'll see. Anyway, it's impossible to hide the truth. And if the Ukrainians had success, if the Ukrainians have and will have success, of course, we are going to see this information and we'll, we're, we are going to see this information rep um, uh, shown on maps of, of different sources, not just the military summary and so on, the Western, the Russian source, source map and so on. And that's it about the battle for Bakhmut and another interesting updates are coming from the northern flank of let's say not just Donbas front line and now we are moving to the Kriminaya front line. The Russian sources reported that Ukrainians also launched a small counter-offensive operation and, f and to tell the truth this is the first report from the Ministry of Defense uh, in such a way when they were saying about some kind of offensive operation about very powerful offensive operation that was repulsed by the Russians and the Russians are saying that Ukrainians were attacking the direction of Chervonopopovka and probably based on the information we have from the open source I believe that 25th Airborne Brigade took uh, took um, part in that attack and probably 66 mechanized brigade probably 95th air assault brigade was involved in that operation but from the russian side there was 252nd motorized regiment and the russians are saying that they managed to repulse that attack and as a result uh, and and the result of those battles of those of that battle was the Ukrainians lost uh, 30 soldiers in one tank and they were forced to step back on their previous positions the entire losses on the Liman front line is around 70 soldiers from the Ukrainian side three armored vehicles including one tank and two artillery systems and that's it no more movements as you can see the level of losses hasn't been increased it's like a regular lo uh, regular level but the only interesting is that event, that update about attack, about the Ukrainian attempt. Probably the Ukrainians were trying to uh, to find and to touch the weak positions of the Russians. But if you ask me, if you ask my opinion, if we take a look at this map, at least from the open source, we know that exactly the bridgehead in Crimea is under protection of 74th motorized brigade, 752nd motorized regiment, 31st motorized brigade. 252nd motorized regiment 144th motorized division bars infantry battalion 
208 motorized regiments. So there are a lot of forces and hardly unlikely the Ukrainians have any chances to do anything in this area. And to tell the truth, I'm not even sure what exactly the Ukrainians were planning to achieve, but probably they were planning to do something. Anyway, we need more data, we need more days to follow the situation and, and possibly within the next few days, the Ukrainians will continue their offensive operation and then we're going to understand the real plans of the Ukrainians in this area. Now, let's move to Donetsk because and we received also a lot of interesting updates from this area. If you remember a few days ago, we discussed that 79th Air Assault Brigade, the Ukrainians took a decision to move this brigade from Marinka because of heavy losses, because of absence of any uh, natural or fortifications where these forces are able to hide and to, to let's say, even to wait just uh, until the, when the Russians can f finish attacking this area. For example, uh, these days the Russians published another video of bombing of the western part of Bakhmut, as you, uh, my bad, Marinka, as you can see. Um, there is nothing, um, how to say, uh, there is nothing even to think about about this area. The Russians attacked this area heavily using all types of weapons, starting with artillery tanks, ther uh, ther thermal bombs and so on, thermal ammo and so on. So probably that was, and as you can see based on this video, the Russians were attacking the western part right on the corner on the edge of this, uh, another explosion, uh, right on the edge of this water, another water lake, Marinska Moria, this Marinska lake. And uh, so as you can see, this entire area is in the gray zone, this area is not under Ukrainian control. So probably that was the reason why the Ukrainians took a decision to step back. As you can see, it's already summer, it's already spring, the end of the spring, but we don't see even a single tree, a single uh, green leaves leave in this area, at least something that Ukrainians can use to hide, to cover. There's nothing to like to f to use for proper defense in this area for the Ukrainian side. So probably that was the reason why the Ukrainians took a decision to step back and I expect as well that the Russians probably will take entire control if they want to proceed their offensive operation further in the direction of uh, Georgievka because if the Russians are not going to continue their movements in this direction then they will not enter Marinka because as we discussed there are no bridgehead no not even a single town left uh, in this area everything w is reduced to ruins and so on and if the Russians are going to continue then of course they need to capture this bridgehead they need to develop and so so on. But if they are not going to continue in Georgievka, at least until some progress in the south in the vicinity of Vogledar, then probably we are not going to see even the final con capturing and final control over Marinka. Another interesting updates are coming from the night. During the night, as you know, the Russians made another massive missile attack and for today we got few videos and one of them came from Nikolaev. As we know, Nikolaev is the port town. Probably there is some kind of connections between Nikolaev and the sea and Odessa and the Ukrainians are able to use to bring some supply and support there. Also, there is a railroad uh, ways that connects Nikolaev with the, entire, the mainland in entire Ukraine. And these explosions took place exactly in the port area, in the warehouses, ammo depots. It was a very big explosion. Uh, furthermore, this is not the only explosion. The Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation reported that during the previous night they, of the local time, they also attack and destroy or damage the headquarters of South, uh, the headquarters by the name of Grom. So probably this is the uh, some kind of uh, tactical forces Ukrainian in this area and the uh, uh, recent night, the previous night, they lost their headquarters and the officers, the Russians haven't provided any numbers about the loss among the officers, among soldiers, probably we're going to see, we're going to get this information a little bit uh, later. Uh, from other updates on the maps, the Russian sources are saying that uh, uh, as a result of fierce fighting, so the, the front line hasn't been changed. Today we got very interesting, uh, some fake from Lugansk district. The Ukrainian sources published another like speculation that they attack Lugansk within the, using the storm shadow missiles. But later we got update that that was some kind of fake. And uh, when talking about other uh, diff changes on the front line on the ground, there are no changes. There were no changes. Uh, the only thing that we can mention and we need to talk about is that uh, 
increased activity, another increased activity on the coupons front line. If you remember, after the Russians captured Mosikovka and the bridge had on the western part of Askol, uh, there was a small operational pause, but today the Russians reported about increasing of intensifying of the clashes in this area. According to their report, the Ukrainians lost 115 soldiers. Uh, it's, it's, the level is higher than usually in the past at least, but today the Minister of Defense also added that uh, after small pause, the Russians were forced to start bombing or there was some kind of artillery bombings from the Russian side of the vicinity of Masutovka. Masutovka. So probably, uh, maybe, there is a very high chances that after the capturing of the bridgehead on the western side of Askol River, the Russians were forced to step back. We haven't received any photo video of confirmation from any forces, neither the Russians nor Ukrainians, but the Minister of Defense reported about artillery duels exactly in this area and that the Russians were attacking these positions so very interesting update and of course very interesting updates are coming from the south ukraine area there are a lot of icons today the uh, russian sources reported about we can say about that ukrainians managed to uh, complete the organization of the uh, attack fist in this area up to 95 percent they have already moved 116 70 117s 47s most of the brigades from the 9th and 10th military corps to uh, on the combat line and the soldiers on this area are saying from the ukrainian side that they expect the beginning of the offensive operation maybe not today maybe not tomorrow but within the next week or this week maybe by the end of this week and also the minister of defense of russian federation confirms the intensifying of clashes in this area they reported that as a result of uh, combat uh, actions in this area the ukrainians lost 150 soldiers as you can see this is a normal level of losses for from the ukrainian side uh, in comparison with the previous days and one more time all these these losses are tightly connected with the things that the ukrainians have already redeployed and deployed their forces along the combat line and as we discussed they are just waiting to receive an order and they will start their greatest counter-offensive operation and nobody knows what exactly is going to happen after and that's it for today military summary channel reminds you to condemn any violence in ukraine Thank you for your watching, subscribe to my channel, put your likes, join my Patreon and have a good day. Bye bye.